composition of Eduardo Martin Martinez and Hugh Kent and Raymond Laflamme. And in this talk, I want to explain you what is feedback algorithmic cooling and how, by understanding the perspective of quantum thermodynamics, it's possible to improve these cooling techniques. So in general, we, okay. yeah. in general, we are interested in cooling physical systems. And the theory of quantum information provides us and inspires to have new cooling techniques by allowing the manipulation of entropy in the quantum level and also combining with contact with the bat to go beyond, to go beyond the conventional cooling. What is conventional cooling? Here I just put an example. Imagine that you have your quantum system and you make contact with a cold bat. What we want is have something better than that. We want to have a temperature that is going to be lower than the temperature of your cold bat. And here the key is the entropy because entropy is not only important concept in thermodynamics, but also in information theory. So in principle, we have the tools for processing the information. So the question here is how can we use these tools for cool your system even beyond the bat? So more concretely, I'm going to assume that we have the system. So we have a string of qubits, that's our system. And the goal is try to cool one of the target, one qubit as much as possible. So we're going to call that qubit the target and we want to cool it. So these are the rules. We are allowed to use unitary operations in the string of qubits. And also we can use the bat, but as we mentioned, the temperature of that bat is not cold enough for our purposes. And here we also have an extra rule. We don't want to use projective measurements because if you use projections, basically the problem is solved and it's not interesting anymore. And also because there are some platforms where you cannot use projective measurements. For example, in the case of NMR, because you have ensemble of qubits, you cannot have access individually to have projections. And even if you have the ability, for example, in superconducting qubits, you have projective measurements. In the experiments, they are not going to be perfect. So this type of ideas are going to help us to improve even the projective result that you will have in that situations. So let's see what we want from the target qubit. Here, just by looking the qubit that we want to cool, we are going to take in general the state and we are going to use the bone Newman entropy and the purity given in this form. When we have this qubit with a Hamiltonian with in the form of the sigma set, which is not loose of generalization, if we start with the Gibbs state, we are going to see that by decreasing the temperature is going to be equivalent to decrease entropy and also equivalent to increase the purity. So this will have like some important applications also in quantum technologies, for example, in quantum computing, where they need methods for prepare highly pure quantum states. They are needed actually because most of the algorithms needs to start in a highly pure state. Here, for example, in the state zero, if they are not highly pure, it might happen that during the calculations, you will have errors. And if you want to correct them, with quantum error correction, you will need ancillas again, and the ancillas need to be highly pure. So going back to the question, what we want to do first in the unitary, in the global string of system, we want to apply unitaries. But here there is a problem. As you know, by applying unitaries, we cannot change the entropy of the global system. But still we can do something interesting. We can try to find an uh, internal redistribution of the entropy in the system. So let's think that we want to find which unitary is going to remove as much as possible entropy from one part of the system and try to compress in the other side of the system. So this is going to be optimized depending what is the system that you have. And it's going to be equivalent to cooling down some part of the system at the expense of warming up the other qubits. So this is going to have like some limitations because as I mentioned, it's going to be unitary dynamics. So 
One of the limitations is the Shannon entropy bound. And because the global eigenvalues of the system are not going to be modified by unitary on the system, we are going to have like some constraint. So here is the part that we can think what we can do with the bat. So imagine that we already did the entropy compression on the string of qubits. So the qubits that are hot can be used to make contact with the bat, and this will help to, pump, to pump entropy out of the system into the bat. That would be in the situation that these qubits are still a little bit hotter than the bat. This is equivalent. Okay, we're going to call that qubit the reset qubits, are the ones that are allowed to make contact with the bat and re thermalize and get the temperature that you have in the bat. This is equivalent of tracing out that part of the system and replace with qubits that have the temperature of your bat. And now the string of qubits are allowed to design a different unitary to make again a different compression. So the iteration of these two steps is what is called Kidvat algorithmic cooling. So it's just the sequence of entropy compression and refresh with the bat. So in the first work that we had, we wanted to explore what are the limits of these methods. So you can keep finding different unitaries after doing the refresh. So we wanted to know what's going to be the final and the limit of this type of method. So um, in the first paper that we did about these limits, we found the analytical expression for the final result. It means that asymptotically, we are going to be achieving what is going to be the final result, and it's given by this expression. But to visualize, maybe it's easier here, I'm plotting the purity as a function of the inverse of the temperature of the bat. So you can see here with different colors, how many qubits we are using on the string and how the final purity is improving in each of the cases. And the part that we were interested in is actually here. This is the temperature that we are going to have for the target qubit as a function of the temperature of the bat. And this M that we have here, M prime, is the number of qubits that you have in the middle between the target qubit and the reset qubit. So you can see that we are obtaining something that decreases exponentially with the number of qubits than the temperature of the bat. And also, this is an analytical expression for the asymptotic value for the final purity of the target qubit. So one natural question is, say, is this a fundamental limit for the, this type of methods? In two papers, the answer was yes. But later, we realized that there were some implicit assumptions, something that was happening, but they didn't realize that it can be made in a more general way. The first is how they are making the contact with the bat. They were assuming that the best that you can do is just letting retermalize the reset qubit individually with the bat. The second implicit assumption was that they were just having initial states which are in product states. We, in that case, are not allowing to have initial correlations between the qubits of the system. So the two other works that we did was removing these assumptions. In the first one, by introducing a new tool for algorithmic cooling, this is a different way to reset the, um, and make an interaction with the bat. Instead of just taking the qubits individually, we can make like cross relaxation. That means that, for example, if you take a pair of qubits, you can re-thermalize like choosing particular energy levels and try to re-thermalize instead of taking the whole qubit individually. And if you want to know, you can if you want to know more about that, you can check this paper. For the second assumption, actually we take advantage of initial correlations, assuming that we have a Hamiltonian that has interacting terms. When you start with a the thermal equilibrium, you are going to have correlations between the systems. So in this paper, we show how you can actually take advantage of these initial correlations to get even better. But what we want to explore here, since we already showed that is a lot of room to improve and try to see if we can have better cooling limits, is try to see what we can do when you also try to understand the perspective of quantum thermodynamics. So for this, we divide 
tested the method and the study in three parts. First, we wanted to see how efficient is the way that we are extracting entropy from the system. For that, we are exploring this ratio, that is, how much entropy we are removing from the target qubit divided by the entropy that is pumped out to the bat. So for this one, we have interesting results in the sense that this ratio is independent of the temperature of the bat when you have the regime of high temperature. So we still want to explain why is that situation. And when while we were studying this efficiency, we also noticed something that is quite interesting, that the fast or the velocity of convergence to the asymptotic value is related to the mutual information that we are creating during the compression step. That means that during the protocol, even if you have like a different sequence of unitaries that will have the same final cooling value, the ones that create too much mutual information in the compression are going to make it slower. So we are now optimizing trying to see something that has the same limit and can make it in the smaller number of steps. This is important because it's more practical for implementations and for be like used in computing. Also, another perspective that we want to explore is using research theory, trying to see how can we explain what is the best result that you can obtain for the entropy compression. For this one, is in collaboration with Rob Speckens. We are trying to see from the perspective of majorization, anthemomajorization, how we can have for a large number of qubits the best entropy compression. And we hope this is going to be soon in the archive. The second part that we want to explore is how you can improve this reset and try to connect with thermodynamics. As I mentioned, we introduced a new type of relaxation that just re-thermalize two different energy levels. This one was later used to design, to design a new method that actually we showed that can have like a better cooling. And this new tool that we introduced later was related with the elementary thermal operations. And that result was actually given by Alvaro Alhambra. He was connecting the operation that we just show to break the limits of the previous method. He connect with elementary thermal operations and prove the optimization of these methods when you have this type of research. So just in conclusion, um, we explored these cooling techniques, we found the limits, and now we are trying to relax and remove all the limitations that were implicit in previous works to make it better and see how the quantum thermodynamics perspective can help us on that. So. Questions? Could you tell us?